graphing a cosecant function. We'll start off with the standard form of the cosecant function is y equals a cosecant of bx minus c plus d. It's very similar to the sine of the cosine curves where the amplitude is the absolute value of a. The period is 2 pi over b. Our phase shift is negative c over b. Remember the opposite of the inside number divided by b. And the vertical shift is d. So the most basic curve is y equals the cosecant of x. Now you must remember that the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine graph. So every time the sine graph would cross the, the middle axis, then at that point we're going to be having an asymptote. Right. So let's start off. Our amplitude for this problem would be 1. Remember, amplitude is the number in front of cosecant. Since there is no number, it's understood to be 1. Our period is 2 pi over b. Again, b is the number in front of the x. If there is no number in front of the x, so it's understood to be 1. So 2 pi divided by 1 is 2 pi. There is no phase shift for this problem, and there is no vertical shift. Now, with the sine and the cosine graphs, I like to have a starting, middle, and ending point. All right. Starting point, if there is no phase shift, it would be 0. The ending point, I would add the 2 pi, and then cut it in half, and I'd get the middle point. At these three points right here, the starting, middle, and ending point for the cosecant graph, we're going to be having asymptotes. And in the cosecant graph, we're going to start plotting some points. And we plot a maximum point at pi over 2 at the first, at the middle of the first two asymptotes. And at the minimum of the second two asymptotes, we plot a point in there at negative 1. And then we look at our cosecant curve. Okay, let's look at another one. y equals negative 2 cosecant, and in parentheses we have 2x minus pi over 2. Now we have the 2 in the front, so the amplitude for this problem would be 2. The negative means that we're going to be starting at the bottom, and then our next point is going to be at the top. And we'll see that when we start to graph. Our period is 2 pi over b, so 2 pi over 2 is just pi. Our phase shift is negative c over b. So opposite of this inside, which is pi over 2, divided by 2 is pi over 4. There is no vertical shift because there's no number on the outside. So I like to find myself a starting, middle, and ending point. My starting point is always my phase shift. I add to that the period, and I get an ending point. So it's 5 pi over 4. And then I take these two numbers and divide it by 2. And then I'm going to get my middle point. At these three points, we're going to be having asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, as we see here. Now, if you remember in our problem, we had a negative. So in between the first two asymptotes, we were at a minimum point, so we're at negative 2. And then halfway between the second and third asymptotes, we're at a maximum point. And then we draw our code so you can't curve. All right, our last problem here is y equals 3 cosecant of x over 2 plus pi, and then minus 1 on the outside. All right, our amplitude is going to be 3. Our period is 2 pi over b, and in this case it's 2 pi over 1 half. So dividing by 1 half, we're multiplying by 2, would give us 4 pi. Our phase shift is negative c over b, so opposite of this inside. Divided by b gives us a negative 2 pi. Our vertical shift is negative 1. Our starting point, we take our phase shift point, which is negative 2 pi. We add to that the period, which gives us 2 pi. Then we cut that in half, and that gives us 0. At our starting, middle, and ending points, we have asymptotes, which we'll take a look at right here. Negative 2 pi, 0, and 2 pi. All right, our amplitude is 3. It's positive, so halfway between, we're going to be up at 3. And then in between our second and third, we're going to be down at negative 3. We draw our curves, and there's that cosecant graph.